Welcome to Bluebell Storytime. I'm Miss Mandy from the Bibi Comer Memorial Library here in Sylacauga. I'm glad you've joined me today. Today, the first book I want to read is The Little Old Lady Who Was Not Afraid of Anything. I'd like to thank the author, Linda Williams, and the illustrator, Megan Lloyd, and the publisher, Thomas Y. Crowell, for allowing me to share the book with you. This is one of my favorites. I think you'll like this one. Once Upon a Time, there was a little old lady who was not afraid of anything. One windy afternoon, the little old lady left her cottage and went for a walk in the forest to collect herbs and spices, nuts and seeds. She walked so long and so far that it started to get dark. There was only a sliver of moon shining through the night. The little old lady started to walk home. Suddenly she stopped. Right in the middle of the path were two big shoes. And the shoes went clomp, clomp. Get out of my way, you two big shoes. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady. And on she walked down the path. But behind her she could hear. Two shoes go clomp, clomp. A little farther on, the little old lady stumbled onto a pair of pants. And the pants went wiggle, wiggle. Get out of my way, you pair of pants. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady. And she walked on. But behind her, she could hear one pair of shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. Farther still, the little old lady bumped into a shirt, and the shirt went shake, shake. Get out of my way, you silly shirt. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady, and on she walked a little bit faster. But behind her, she could hear one pair of shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. A little ways on, the little old lady came upon two white gloves and a tall black hat. The two white gloves went clap, clap. The tall black hat went nod, nod. Get out of my way, you two white gloves and you tall black hat. I'm not afraid of you, she said. And on she walked just a little bit faster. But behind her, she could hear. Two shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. One pair of gloves go clap, clap. And one tall black hat go nod, nod. By now, the little old lady was walking at quite a fast pace. She was very near her cottage when she was startled by a very huge, very orange, very scary pumpkin head. And the head went, boo, boo. This time, the little old lady did not stop to talk. She did not stop at all. She ran. But behind her, she could hear two shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One black hat go nod, nod. And one very scary pumpkin head go, boo. Boo! The little old lady did not look back. She ran as fast as she could and didn't stop to catch her breath until she was safe inside her cottage with the door locked. She sat in her chair by the fire and she rocked and she rocked. It was so quiet in her cottage before the knock knock on the door. Should she answer it? Well, she was not afraid of anything. So she went to the door and opened it. And what do you think she saw? Two shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One hat go nod, nod. And one very scary pumpkin head go boo, boo. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady bravely. What do you want anyway? We've come to scare you. You can't scare me, said the little old lady. Then what's to become of us? The pumpkin head suddenly looked unhappy. I have an idea, said the little old lady. She whispered into the pumpkin's ear. The pumpkin head nodded and its face seemed to brighten. The little old lady said good night, closed the door, and whistled on her way to bed. The next morning she woke up early. 
she went to her window and looked out into her garden. And what do you think she saw? Two shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. Let me get them on here. One shirt go shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One hat go nod, nod. And one very scary pumpkin head go boo, boo. And scare all the crows away. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that story. And I want to thank Samantha for holding the book for me so I could do the, uh, the, the pictures here. Thank you so much. Now, the little old lady in this story met each of the objects in order. First, the shoes, next the pants, then the shirt, gloves and hat, and last, the pumpkin head. Putting ideas, events, and objects in order is called sequencing. We sequence all day long, dividing our time into what we need to do first, second, last, Sequencing can be a hard concept for children to grasp, especially when they're telling a story. Using words like first, next, then, and finally can clue your child into what's coming next. Telling a story with pictures can also be helpful. Now, a fun way to do that, something very easy to make, is just taking paper plates. These happen to be orange, and I'm going to tell a story. First, we bought a clean pumpkin. Then we cleaned him out and we cut out one eye. Then we cut out another eye. That made two. Then we cut out a nose on our pumpkin. And then we cut a mouth. And here's our completed pumpkin. This is fun for your children to tell the story. You can lay these out on the floor. Actually, they can ma make these out of plates or construction paper, whatever you have. This helps them re see how to get the, the pictures in order to tell the story. Great. That's just a fun activity you can do around the time of Halloween. All right. I was so excited when this book came in the library. This is one of my favorite characters, Tacky the Penguin. I want to read Tacky and the Haunted Igloo. I'd like to thank the author, Helen Lester, the illustrator, Lynn Munsinger, and the publisher, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, for allowing me to share this with you. And if you haven't read, we have other books about Tacky. You should read that. He's, a, he's an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. Halloween was coming to nice, icy land, and this year was special because the penguins had decided to turn their igloo into a haunted igloo. Wouldn't that be fun and scary for their trick-or-treat guests? For days, Goodly and Lovely had decorated their home with cobwebs, pumpkins, skeletons, warning signs, and all things Halloween-y. Meanwhile, Angel, Neatly, and Perfect worked on the treats, yummy gummy Swedish fish, bat sickles, and awful waffles. And what did Tacky the Penguin do? Snacky Tacky sampled the treats by the dozen and pronounced them beak smacking good. When the morning of the big Halloween night rolled around, the penguins had a staff meeting. Who was going to haunt the haunted igloo? They were, of course. And that meant they had to choose very scary costumes. I'm scared of insects, said Goodly, so Goodly became an insect. I'm afraid of the dark, admitted Lovely, so Lovely wore a dark outfit with a big black mustache. The scariest things I can think of are m m monsters stammered Angel, who had become a monster. And thunder and lightning are worse, added neatly in a stormy outfit. As for me, announced Perfect, I am afraid of bubbles. Bubbles? Bubbles? But perfect was perfect, so no one dared to ask any question. Now the companions turned to Tacky. Tacky, what are you afraid of? Tacky couldn't think of a single thing that frightened him. Nothing. But, cried his companions, you can't wear nothing. It's Halloween. Think, Tacky, think. So Tacky waddled off to a thinking place and thunk and thunk and thunk. Looks like you went to sleep, doesn't it? That evening, the first trick-or-treaters arrived at the haunted igloo, shivering in delight at the scary sounds, like the buzz of an insect and the blub of a bubble. Cobwebs surrounded the visitors and skeletons popped out of the walls. Ooh, it was so scary. The trick-or-treaters kept coming and coming and coming. 
and when they had been scared silly, they all departed happily with shivering spines, feathers on end, and bags loaded with Swedish fish, bat sickles, and awful waffles. This was the best haunted igloo in the history of the world. But wait, things were going too well. Where, oh, where was Tacky? Had he forgotten it was Halloween? Knock, bangity, knock. The entire igloo clinked as it shook. Who could be banging so loudly? The noise hurt their ear places. With caution, goodly, lovely angel, neatly and perfect, creaked the door open, and there stood three ghosts, three ghosts who wasted no time in announcing, we're trick-or-treating ghostsies, and we ain't no toothy fairies, so give us all your yummy treats, or we do something scaries. Give us all your yummy treats. Now, that really was scary. And the reason it really was scary was that there were no yummy treats left. Thanks to the visitors, and especially thanks to Snacky Tacky, not a Swedish fish scale, bat sickle drip, or awful waffle crumb remained. The three ghosts searched high, low, and sideways for signs of a treat. Nothing. And after finding nothing, they whipped off their costumes, gasped. <gasps> the hunters were back. We're not called hunters for nothing, they growled. And with that, they began the chase. Going to catch some pretty penguins and we'll grab them by the toe and we'll plop them in our treatsy bags. ho de ho ho All this commotion disturbed Tacky's nap, or uh, his thinking. Must be party time, he thought, as he rushed to get ready. Bursting onto the scene, he shouted, Is this a scary costume or what? His companions pointed frantically to the big bullies in the doorway. Tucky waddled right up to the biggest hunter, gave him a friendly flipper slap, and exclaimed, Well, howdy do, bro? 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 The hunter went from looking mean to looking slightly confused. Bro? Like in brother? he mumbled. As he looked at Tacky more closely, the big fella began to get nervous. Him's got the same bootsies, yup. Same pantsies, shirty, and suspender ender enders. Same scarfy, yup. And looky, him's hat's just like mine. Gotta be me brother. And then a worse thought hit him right in his itty bitty brain. But wait, him's just exactly like me. Him's me twin brother. Then me's a twin and so scary looking. Me scared of meself. And at that, all three hunters dove their furry paws over their eyes. So there the penguins were, stuck with three shaking and shivering hunters under the kitchen table. How long would they stay there? A week? A month? Forever? The shivering would wobble the table so the soup would spill. And where would they put their webbies when they sat down to eat? There were no treats left to coax them out. Maybe, just maybe, they could frighten them away. So they tried their best, or worst, haunting noises. Bzzz went the insect. Wubba wubba, moaned the dark one. Yeech, screeched the monster. Boom biddy boom, roared the thunder. Blub blub blub, bubbled the bubble. The hunters didn't budge. Then Tacky chirped. Hey, bro, I'm coming home with you. Well, that did it. Up popped Big Bro, and he and his buddies fled the igloo. The hunter called, You's not coming home with me, twinsy brother. You be's too scary. He glumped away as fast as he could go, wondering, Does me have a beak like me twin brother? And his sidekicks hissed, You think you was scared? We was seeing double. Two of you was twice as scary. Back in the igloo, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly and perfect, hugged Tacky. Tacky was an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. All right, I hope you enjoyed that Tacky and the Haunted Igloo story. And thank you so much for joining me at Bluebell Storytime.